What's up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be testing out a new product. So we all have some sort of camping and outdoor adventures throughout the year. And we always have to have a solution for lighting. And today we're gonna be working on a product that will give us a more affordable option for lighting. So let's go to the back here and we'll show you guys what we're working on today. <clears throat> So if you guys look at this up top rack system, the Bravos and the Alphas have these cutouts already where the light pods would just sit inside of here. You got two on each side on the roof rack. So we have all heard of rock lights, whether we're mounting it on our roof racks, bed racks, or even under the uh, wheel wells, but Today, we are gonna be testing out these R4T rock lights. And the reason why we are working with the up top system is because these light pods are a direct fitment to any of these up top racks. These cutouts for the roof rack, and these will just mount right on here. And the rock lights, will mount inside of it. So we're gonna assemble these to show you guys how these two work together. And then we are gonna show you guys the kit that we're using to wire all of them up into each other and into a power source. So let's come back here and look at all the stuff that we're gonna be using. So of course you've got the rock light, you've got the light pods, we're gonna need some zip ties for all the wires, the butt connectors to connect the actual rock light into the wiring and terminals for the power source. And these are gonna be the hardware that this specific rock light kit will come with. And um, some tools you're gonna need. You need some strippers, you know, basic uh, ratchet or whatever you want to use but the sizes are two and a half and a three for these for the hardware here first thing we'll do we will just put all of the rock lights into the pods itself here and you just feed the wire through the light pod like so and r4t facing up so here you have four holes. These two holes are gonna, or that's what's gonna attach the whole light pod and the rock light onto the rack system. These two holes in the middle are gonna hold the rock light into the light pod. You're gonna use two of these guys, two of these guys per light pod and rock light. Okay, so to attach the rock light into the light pod you're going to be using these bolts here so you just kind of have to hand start it first and since this is a plastic piece it's just going to tap itself so there's no threads and when you first start it, it feels a little weird but you can feel it tightening up as you tighten it so like that yeah now we've got the rock light secured to the light pod itself and we'll just do that for all however many rock lights you're setting up let's do that first and then we'll start uh, cutting out the cutouts that are on the side plates. So we've got all four of the rock lights mounted into the light pod. And I know we have some questions regarding water getting in and all that. So the only part exposed to the outside is right here. And we open this up 
and checked inside here there's already a seal and then the back where all the wiring is when you have this attached into the side plate all this is protecting the back the back casing from any sort of water getting into it so if you just see like this the only way water would get in is through that and there's already a seal in there and this would be for your rack system if you wanted to run it under where the wheels are as your rock lights it'll come with this rubber piece and the rock light would sit inside of it like so and you see that is also protecting the back from any kind of weather, water, condensation exposure. Works the same way as our light pod. So you can run it this way for underneath where the wheels are, or you can run it this way for up top where all you know the rack system would go. All right, so now that we've got all of these wired, we can assemble all of these into the rack itself. And since the rack here has um, these cutouts already for the light pods, you'd have to just chop these pieces off, remove the plate, and then the light pod would just sit in there. Alright, so once you cut out the three tabs here, it just comes out. So the rack is aluminum, so you don't have to use much effort to cut through this. And don't worry about the uh, exposed parts that don't have powder. Since it's aluminum, you're not going to get any rust. Just make sure the cuts are clean and against the side, like this one. This one we're just going to cut a little bit more and make it flat. So after we cut out these tabs for the pre-cut hole in the rack, you're just gonna feed your wire through. And once you have it in here, see a little gap down there all the way up? We're just gonna push it all the way down like that. And you can see once you push it all the way down, it's not wiggling anywhere. That's where we want it. And we're just gonna grab a punch That way we know where to put the holes for the screws that's going to hold the light pod into there. So we'll do that for all four. Alright, once we have the indents for where the holes need to be, this is a 964 drill bit. Careful you don't drill so hard that you're hitting your color match inner plate. Take it easy. All right, now that we have the holes drilled, we can attach the light pot assembly and we'll use the button heads that come with the hardware. The holes that are on the light pot itself are slightly slotted. So that if you do somehow make the holes a little crooked, you could, you could still wiggle it up and down a little bit to straighten the hole. These, the hardware that we're providing is stainless steel and you're going to an aluminum plate. So it should be fairly easy to just get them started. And then you just, Tighten them up. So that is what it looks like 
once we got those screws in very very tight against the plate there and we have it to where when it sits inside of the light pod it's pointing downwards since this is very high up so you get lighting from down here all right so up here each of the rock lights will have wire with an end coming out like this on all four corners this is the wire that will be provided and it's the red and black wire within one wire so that you don't have to have a positive and a negative and then wrap them up so that they stick together and I think what we're gonna do we're just gonna go in since the battery's on the passenger side of the engine bay we're just gonna start from this end go down over and then back up to the battery so we've cut this length here so these when we have these all kitted out they will you have enough length to cut it to fit a tundra like this or you can cut it to a foreigner length or a Tacoma FJ so on and so on but there'll be enough wire in there for you so this wire here coming from the front driver to the rear driver we've cut enough to where it'll reach to the end of that wire like that so let's just strip this right now and connect these and then we'll go down there and do that end down there all right so we've got these uh, heat shrink butt connectors on the positive and negative on this side and then we'll just connect it to this one and we'll shrink that and then once we have it all wired up and we test and everything works we'll do a little electrical tape around it just so just to make sure you know nothing gets in so red to red and then you crimp the middle black to black Okay, make sure it's nice and tight. All right, so since this is an alpha rack, we do have two side plates here. We're just gonna set it in between the inner and outer plate on top of the spacer. And run it all the way to the back one here. Since it is gonna be in between two plates, we're gonna heat shrink this and electrical tape it up right now the two ends are what you're going to heat shrink careful not to melt your wire now we'll just electrical tape And then run it back here all right so we've got all four of the rock lights wired up together so we started from depending where your battery is on your truck this one's on the passenger side so we start in the opposite end driver down to here across and then back up on top here we have cleaned up the wiring so before we had um, the wires just held up by electrical tape just to pretty much hold it where we want it to be but i was zooming in here you guys can kind of see there this alpha rack has these holes on the bottom where you can zip tie the cables to and then running it down 
the windshield is where we have it so that wire comes right there and we just ran it down this trim piece right here basically just tucking it in um, so the, really the only visible part is going to be that very top part um, since you know there's really nothing hiding it so you can see the wire there but as far as everywhere else coming down here you don't see it at all which is really nice and then it just pops out right there in that little hole and then this is where we are at so when we get to this step here there's a few options so we're going to show you guys how to wire this in a few different ways so if we have uh, snipped it here this will be a good time to connect it to um, a switch pro or a garmin power switch or anything that is powered right here near the battery but we don't have any of that currently on this 22 tundra since it's so new we didn't really have to cut it short here so um so what you guys would do if you guys are in the same position as us um, where you guys will be running it inside the cab and connecting it to a physical switch um, a factory file style switch um, don't cut it short if you guys are going to do it that way um, keep it long long enough to run inside here and all the way across to the driver's side so basically just um, have it long enough to come down here it's going to go through that um, spot right there there's a little hole that will cross to the other side and there will be an actual switch over there which we'll show you guys how to to, uh, to wire that in okay so now we are ready to show you guys how to install this with a factory style switch so we had this wire cut earlier so we uh, added some wire to it which we're going to run inside so we currently have about eight feet of wire we added seven foot and then uh, from uh, from there to here is about a foot or so so roughly we have about eight foot to get us inside and all the way over to the driver's side dash so we got the battery pulled out and we did that for two reasons one because we need to get to this grommet right there which i could have squeezed my hand behind that battery just because i have smaller hands but two um i can actually show you guys what that grommet looks like without the battery there so what you could do with this grommet is we'll pull it off and we have something to replace it right here so this grommet is something that we can actually provide for you guys we'll put it down in the link below um, this grommet will be a direct replacement for that one and it has a hole so you guys can actually feed um, this wire through there so this wire is a quarter inch um, thick wire and the hole that's on this new grommet is just one size bigger so that way you can have a little wiggle room to fit more wires in there if you wanted to so pulling this grommet out is going to be pretty easy so we'll just grab it from the top here pull it back comes off super easy so the next step here what we want to do is we want to put that new grommet through the end of the wiring and then we can actually go through that hole right there so if you guys look in there there's actually a little um, felt or fabric material between that and the actual inside of the cab so what we're going to do to get the wire inside we're actually going to need to poke it so we got a flathead um, we're going to go ahead and make a hole in that and it won't really damage anything or cause any um, bad anything bad to it so we'll just poke a hole so that way we can actually run this wire inside um, or else we can just we're just going to be running it um, behind the actual uh, felt or carpet material so we have the hole made as you guys can see there which is not much we'll feed that inside and then we have the cable pointed down so that way when it goes in there it actually goes down and that's where we're going to grab it now that we have the wire pretty much all the way in we're going to spray this with some soapy water that's just going to make it easier for us to get that grommet in and then what you want to do is put the sheet metal in between the groove of the grommet Just like so 
and then there's just enough room to actually move the cable in and out if you need to um, but if you guys are worried about water getting in there you could put silicone to completely seal it um, but being that it's so far up and way in the back there's not going to be any issues um, with water or anything getting in there so on the passenger side here this is where our cable is coming out you guys can see there that uh fabric material that i was talking about where we had to poke that hole from the engine side so it comes through down so here we have the rest of our wire so next up what we're going to do is we're going to find the fuse panel for the inside of the vehicle um, so we are on the passenger side the fuse panel uh, is going to be about here there is a cover that is blocking it but it comes off pretty easy um, you just have to squeeze the clip and pull it down try to do it without getting in the camera's way but you don't really need any tools for it you can just use your fingers to squeeze and pull down and there's going to be a few of them so we'll go ahead and get that unclipped first and then we'll show you guys where they're at so once you have it all clipped up you lo lower it down like so and then pull towards the back of the vehicle it'll all come off there aren't any screws or anything so they're all clips this is what it'll look like so one two three four clips towards the back side of the truck and then there's two kind of pins that go in that you kind of just have to slide out so once you have that out i'll show you guys what's underneath there so underneath here you guys will see that fabric material that i showed you guys earlier and then the fuse cover is going to be right there that black cover there so we'll go ahead and pull that off and show you guys the fuses behind that so we have it slid open here so this just comes up and clips in but this is what it'll look like once you have that pulled off and there's actually one open fuse that we can actually use so here is the fuse panel cover this is going to be backwards actually because um, it's mounted upside down so you would read it backwards so right here where you guys see that diagonal line is an empty switch or an empty fuse I'm sorry that fuse is going to be powered so you'll have a constant 12 going to that fuse so what we're going to do is we are going to be plugging in an add a fuse or an add a circuit to that fuse so that way we can draw power from it because we want these lights to be pretty much powered whenever we want and being that they're LED they pull um, only maybe one amp at most once they're all powered together so it's not going to be any power it's not going to be anything that will kill the truck if we leave it on for a while so this is the add a fuse or add a surrogate that's going to come in the kit this uses micro fuses so the one that's going to be already installed in there is going to be a 5 amp that is going to be plenty to provide power to probably more than eight total um, of the uh, rock lights that's going to be together. So it's going to be plenty enough power, but if you guys decide you guys want to attach more, um, you guys can go ahead and swap that out for a 10 amp, for example. But that 5 amp is going to do um, more than enough for what we have right now. So let's get this put in. So we have it plugged in just to kind of show you guys what it will look like once you guys have it installed so it'll look like that you guys can have it pointed the other way um, as well but being that we are going to be running this to the driver's side we just figured having it pointed towards the driver's side would be best um, obviously it's not connected to anything right now but we are just using this to kind of show you guys where we're going to be plugging it in the empty fuse area and then we're going to attach the wire to this so something that is going to be optional in the kit is going to be this red wire this single red wire is going to allow you to crimp it to the added fuse that you guys see here so all we did was just crimp that little blue section to this red wire and the black wire the double wire right there let me zoom in here there you guys see we wanted to test it out make sure that it runs through to the driver's side and it does so when you guys are doing this, I would recommend pulling both the black wire and this red wire 
to the driver's side if you guys are doing this on a 22 Tundra. This red wire is not gonna be um, needed if you guys are installing rock lights like this to the uh, a Forerunner or a Tacoma, just because the fuse box is gonna be located over there on a Tacoma and a Forerunner. So you wouldn't have to run this long wire, red wire all the way to the driver's side. And you guys will probably will not run the uh, double wire from this side to the driver's side as well. Just because the battery, the fuse box and everything will be on the driver's side on a um, third gen Tacoma and fifth gen 4Runner. But we are working on a 22 Tundra. So now at this point we are gonna grab this. We're just gonna follow that exact path right there. We're gonna feed it and we'll grab it on the driver's side. So we got the uh, red wire started through that hole going to the driver's side. I wanted to show you guys a quick little tool that will come in very handy when you guys are doing this just because that hole is pretty small and those wires might not go straight. So you can use either a really long screwdriver or what we have here, um, this tool here has a little grip down here and then when you squeeze, the head of it opens up and we put the top of the wire there, closed it, and then we fed this through that hole and it made it super easy to uh, get the wire to the other side without any issues. So right here on the driver's side panel, we have a couple blank switches here. So we have our end of the wire here that we need to basically go behind and we'll put it in one of these two locations. So now what we need to do is actually pull this panel off um, and if you guys haven't done that before, it's actually pretty easy to pull these things off. Um, we'll just grab it from the inside here and then we'll tug it just like so. And then there are actually these little red clips. You can kind of see one right there. And all over here, hopefully you can see that. But these clips pretty much go into these little holes and they grab onto it. Toyota has made it really easy for consumers and us to really pop them off and go back in the exact same way um, and just super easy there's no screws or anything so that's pretty nice when especially when you guys are installing accessories like like these so we went ahead and popped out the blanks that were right here these blanks are basically these exact same switches except that they don't actually click or anything popping them out is a little tricky um, but you can definitely do it with the back of, back side of these. So on the side of these switches, there are these little tabs that kind of grab onto them. What I did as I just went back here, reached behind with my hand and kind of just pushed it out and forced it out. Um, if you wanted to do it the proper way, you would unplug all of these wires um, and remember where they go and then get into the back of it. Next to it, you would use a flathead to pry it and then push it out easily. What I did was kind of forced it out um, by just reaching out here and just pushing it um, pretty hard. Depending on the trim level that you guys have, there is gonna be a few wires plugged into these blanks. So let me see if I can reach them here. So we have actually two blank switches here that had connectors plugged into them if I could reach them. So here's one, you see a white one here and a blue one over here. So these were plugged into these blanks just to kind of hold it um, in place. Now that we're actually putting a switch, we just disconnected them, removed the blank, and then we're actually gonna install an aftermarket switch. This aftermarket switch here um, is labeled side lights just because the lights in the roof rack are lighting up the side. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a little panel underneath here that kind of hides stuff. We are gonna actually remove that. And what we'll need is actually just a Phillips head way over here in this corner. Hopefully you guys can see that there is one screw. Um, you could use a Phillips or an eight millimeter, I believe is what the size is but Phillips does just fine. And then there are a couple of tabs that you need to squeeze and pull down. Pretty easy 
to do that. I'm doing it with one hand, so it's fairly easy. I'm trying to stand out of the way so that, you, that way you guys can see. But basically, we need to come up here. So I have my light down here so I can see down there. So I'm just going to feed it. And once again, I apologize if I am in the way. But you guys get the point of what I'm trying to do. Just feed the wire all the way up here, which I have done. And then we'll go through the hole. So first thing we are gonna do is find a wire that we can pull power from for the illumination. So when your headlights um, turn on, these lights will turn on as well. So what we're gonna do is we unplugged the connector that is directly above the one that we have. You can pretty much use any of them if you wanted to, but just for ease, we did the one right above it. So, and we also found out that the very last wire, which is like a orangish, light brownish color, um, that is the wire for the illumination. So what we're gonna do is we are going to be using a uh, tap to tap into that. So that will consist of this piece here, which is just a plug um, that you can crimp um, a uh, wire at the end, which is what we're gonna do for the switch. So basically this side is gonna go with a switch. And then the other piece, which is kind of like a jaw, that is gonna get squeezed around that orange-ish, brownish wire that we see. So in order to do this, we just need a set of pliers and then we'll just set this around that orange wire and then just squeeze it down. So looking down here, you guys can kind of see it right there. Once it's fully tightened or squeezed, it, it grabs onto that wire and makes contact with the teeth that are on that, uh, that clip with the copper wire that is on the inside of, uh, of that wire. All right, so now we are pretty much ready to wire up the switch here. So let's explain all the wires and everything from the um, wires that we pulled to the actual the aftermarket switch that we have. So the aftermarket switch will consist of five total wires. There is a black, green, white, red and yellow the black and the white those two will be your ground for the switch so there's two grounds because there's an actual um, small led that is different than your normal toyota tacoma or forerunner switch so they have two grounds and then right here i have the black wire that we pulled from the roof all the way down to the engine and then all the way through to the driver's side. So I pulled the uh, insulation back so you guys can see both the red and the black that is on this wire. The black on this wire will go with these two, the black and white on the switch. So these three will be t um, tied together and we will add a ring terminal so that way we can put it on a bolt or something that is in the back of this um, part here to ground it. So what we have left is going to be the green, the yellow, and the red. So the yellow is going to be illumination. So what we have a T-tap right here on the back side of um, the switch that I showed you guys how to do earlier is going to go to yellow. So we got the yellow taken care of. Now what we have left is going to be the green and the red. So the red is going to go to our adifuse that we just plug into on the passenger side over there with the add a fuse or add a circuit wherever you want to however you want to say that so these two will go together so basically just red to red simple and then what we have left is going to be the green so this green is actually going to go to the red that comes out of the you know the bundle where it had two wires coming from the roof so this is going to be your load. So the green is going to go to the red that is on that thicker black wire that we pulled from the roof. Let's go ahead and get these wired up and just show you guys what it looks like. 
Um, and then in the kit, we'll provide all the butt connectors so that way you guys um, can use it that way. If you guys don't have a solder or don't want to solder or are not, or not comfortable with it, the butt connectors um, are actually really, really good, the ones that we use. And being that it's, it has the adhesive um, heat shrink in it, it actually holds on pretty tight as well. And we've never had any single one fail, so you guys won't have to worry about that. So another really important thing that you guys want to do is make sure you guys pull these wires through your actual switch location like I have here and not wire it on the outside because that way when you guys are done, you guys won't be able to push it in because it's all outside of the actual panel. So make sure you pull the wires through the hole where you're going to be putting the switch first. Then you can go ahead and wire it up and that way when it's all done, you can tuck it all back in there and it'll be all in the actual panel. So first we'll do this one, which is the black one we pulled from the roof. So what we'll do is we'll just strip these back with some strippers. We will twist it, that way they go in easier. So the red, we will put a butt connector on, like so. We will crimp it. Then this one will go with the green, so we will plug the green in and then crimp it, give it a nice tug, you can tell it doesn't come off, so what we'll do is just heat shrink that once we are all done with all of these. So next we will connect the black and white wires that are on the aftermarket switch to the black on the uh, single black insulated wire that comes out to two wires from the roof. So put all three of those together. Then with the provided uh, ring terminal, as you guys can see here, this one has a blue um, heat shrink um, connector instead of the pink just because it's made for thicker wires just because we do have three wires going into it instead of just one like the uh, butt connectors. So once you have all those push all the way through go ahead and crimp it down. Give that a tug on each wire and none of it's coming out. And this has a adhesive inside of it as well. Um, so that way when you heat shrink it, it'll seal it really nice. So next up, we're gonna do the red wires. So we got the red wire from the aftermarket switch. And then we have the red wire from the uh, added fuse. So we'll twist those, grab our butt connector, put it in, crimp it. The other side in, crimp it as well, give it a nice tug, as you guys can see there, nice and solid. So now what we have left is going to be a yellow wire. That yellow wire is going to be your illumination. So that T-tap that we put back here, this one right here, kind of hard to see. But um, that one, we're gonna put the opposite, uh, or the connector that goes with the T-tap, which is this little guy right here. So this one, it just has a single metal piece down the middle of the connector, so that way it plugs into the T-tap. So this one, we will just put the yellow right in there. This one does not have heat shrink on it. But being that where everything is inside the vehicle, there's not really gonna be exposed to any moisture. We're not gonna have to worry about putting a heat shrink on that. But if you would like to, you can. Um, but this will get connected to the T-tap. So at this point, you guys can go ahead and push everything back in. And then once we are in, we can go ahead and plug the yellow wire to the T-tap we have back there and then ground the ground wires that we just uh, put together. 
Um, if you guys don't have enough slack on your insulation here from the black wire, you guys could have trimmed it back a little bit further, but we have a pretty close bolt to the actual panel, so we don't really need a, a lot of slack. But if you guys are doing this, go ahead and cut about maybe six inches of slack from the actual black wire, so that way you guys have more slack to work with, but I know exactly where we're going, so I just cut it real short. So let's go ahead and push it all in. And then once you guys have it all the way in, you guys can go ahead and connect your switch just by pushing it all the way in. And then it'll sit, seat itself in place like so. And then now you have a perfectly working switch. So now that we have the actual switch pushed in, we're gonna be working back here. So the single yellow wire, we're gonna plug that into the T-tap and we're going to just plug it in like so. It's going to be a little bit hard to see because um, my hand's going to be in the way, but I'll just plug it in and then I'll show you guys what I did. One thing with these is just you got to make sure that that metal piece is centered, not off to one side, and then just plug it right in there. Make sure it's all the way in and this is what it'll look like. Try to move that wire out of the way there. So we got that T-tap with that yellow connector connected to it. Now, the only thing we have to worry about is the ground. So there is actually a ground right here. So if you guys look to the back side of that, there's a metal bracket that goes to it. So that's why we made our ground wire so short, just because we have ground right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen that 10 millimeter bolt put our uh, ring terminal just to the back side of the plastic and then when we cinch it down together we'll make a nice ground contact right there. So we'll go ahead and pop that 10 millimeter off right there. It's pretty nice that we have ground so close to it. So grab our ring terminal like so. We'll plug it in right behind it. like that. Let's lift the plastic up a little bit. Then put that bolt back through. And there we have it. Now we have ground right here. So our short wire is totally okay. Now we are all done. So if you guys wanted to at this point clean up anything you wanted to, tuck anything back, zip tie anything, you guys can do it. And then you can go ahead and put this panel back. So all we did here was just add a single small zip tie so that way um, it just cleans up the wires just a little bit. But now we can go ahead and pop the panel back on. So there's this little lip here on the side. Just pull it out as you uh, feed that in. And then just line up the holes with the red clips. Everything will line up just as it should and you'll clip everything in and then if you have any dangling wires underneath here you go ahead and zip tie them up and then put this panel back there's just a couple clips once you guys have the panel back down here that little cover has the one corner that kind of slides in and then these just clip in and then you have the one single um, screw Phillips screw that you'll install back and then you guys are all set all right let's try it out flip that up, switch on there it is and turn down the brightness a little bit on the camera and on the lights so as you guys can see here still pretty dang bright and it's currently daylight so we'll show you guys these in the dark as well a little bit later in this video but as you guys can see here, pure white, nice and bright, and they're angled just the perfect amount. So when they, when you guys are at camp at night, this will be illuminating your walk area to get to your truck, whatever. So there it is. Okay guys, we are in the middle of the night 
and uh, we're gonna do a little comparison for you guys to show you guys the difference between the R4T rock lights and the Baja designs. Both are gonna be great, like I mentioned before, um, but I just want to do a really good comparison to show you guys um, both. So I'm gonna flip this around and show you guys what they look like. So over here we have the 2022 Tundra with our new R4T rock lights. And over here we have our third gen Tacoma with the Baja Designs rock lights. So we're gonna show you the Baja Designs ones first. And I apologize if the audio is gonna be a little crappy just because I did forget my mic. So I'm just using the on um, camera mic. But um, here it is. So we have one rock light out. This is the Baja Designs rock light um, here on the up top overland roof rack with the scene pods. Um, so that one's out and we just found out today. So we have three over here. One, two, three. Two of it is on the bed rack. One of it is on the roof rack. So when you guys are looking for camp, this is what you guys will see on the ground. Actually, let me turn off my um, camera light. So this is what you guys will see when you guys are looking for campground so driving around you guys turn on these lights or you guys are at camp already and you're using these lights to kind of you know give you a sense of where you guys are at or where the truck is at so there's that over here we have the tundra 22 tundra so we got two on here so it's gonna be hard for the camera to kind of focus but here's what it looks like on the Tundra. So the very first difference you guys will see is that the 22 Tundra with R4T rock light has more of a pure white um, color instead of a more warm-ish color on the Bajas. So I'll step back a little bit here and see if we can see the two a little bit further away. So again, the Tundra has two rock lights, the Tacoma has three, and it has some in the bed as well, and on the other side, so as you guys can see here. So don't count all that in the back, just because this one has like 12 rock lights total, and this one has four total. So only look on the side of the trucks. So over here, and over here. So three versus two, so what we're seeing in person is that two of the R4T rock lights competes with three of the Baja Designs rock lights just because these ones have, I believe, only one or two LEDs um, chips in them, whereas the R4T one has three each. So, um, so here's a little closer view directly to the side of it. And over here. So yeah, I'll show you guys the other lights that I was talking about. So in the bed we have a few as well. So there's a lot going on here. So those probably make up for some of the light that you guys are seeing as well. Um, you guys can see there, there's one right there that's pointing into the bed, but some of it is actually getting onto the floor here as well. So yeah. I would say the R4T one's doing pretty good for being much cheaper. So we found a couple of little black stickers that are for the uh, switch controller. So we blocked them up, you guys can see here. The light still is, you know, it can get through, but you don't really see it on the floor. So we blocked that one. We blocked the one in the bed and the other one in the bed back here so now I mean there's still some on the other side which should only shine on the other side so now we only have two over here for comparison to do kind of a one-to-one -one or apples to apples um, comparison so here don't look at that one over there but from here this is what you're getting all the way to about here Pretty much to the front of the truck, 
is about how wide of a span you'll get. So, pretty nice. Let me give you another view from over here. So once again, don't look at over there, just look at the side of the truck. So, the rack is actually here. So yeah, this is what you'll get. So, there's that. And R4T rock lights. The color correction on the camera might make it look a little blue too. Um, but it is pure white. So there's that. So pretty close to comparison. I still think the R4T one might be just a little brighter. R4T. Baja Designs. Seems like it has more of a broader spe spectrum too, or spread, I'm sorry, not spectrum. A little more spread on that. Kind of dies down pretty quickly right here. This one goes a little bit further. But yeah, there's that. I'm glad we had something in the truck to cover those up. Okay guys, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. Um, we will have the links to everything, the R4T rock lights, to the um, light pods, to the Baja Designs rock lights, the scene pods, um, and all the racks down in the description below if you guys have picked that up. But that is going to be it for this video. If you guys are not subscribed to the channel already, subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more content like this anything Toyota truck related. So that's going to be it. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.